Hi everyone, uh, this is Alia. I'm back with another deck review. Um, today we're going to be exploring the Tarot of Dreams. Um, this is by Chiro Marchetti. I'm pronouncing it right because I just watched a uh, interview um, and that is how you pronounce his name. So all this controversy around it and <laughs> All this uh, speculation of how to exactly pronounce it is Chiro Marchetti. And I'm very happy that I now know. So thank you for the interview that you gave so that we know your name. Because it, it is just a shame that we, we have all this artwork and we don't know how to properly uh, credit the artist for his work. And we have to thank him for all the beautiful decks that he has, um, that he's made for us. Now... Uh, because I, I did a review of the Legacy of the Divine and I kind of uh, didn't even get any close to what the name should sound like. So now that I have it right, I'm so happy. And that's good news, right? <laughs> okay, so this deck um, came out a few years ago and I bought it when it did come out. Now this um, this deck... Okay, let's let's just uh, start from how to open this. That I don't know how to get it out because now it's empty. So <laughs> I have no uh, no way of opening this right now. Let's just try with this. So, come on, almost there. No. Okay, it doesn't really matter because I don't have anything in it. Okay, there you go. So this is the. <laughs> the box that you were getting back in the days. Now they're coming with better uh, boxes. So this is not the situation that you have to deal with. Uh, and the cards were just kind of a thrown in there. So I took them out because I put them in order for you. And if you just put it like you have two piles, but if you put them in order and then you get them out, you're not going to find them in the same order because they get mixed. So um, that's not exact. That's why I took it out. So that we don't have to waste time going through it. Now, once I close it, you saw it, right? Because once I close it, there, there's no way I can open it again. So it's a nice box because your cards don't get damaged. It's a nice box because it is uh, small in comparison to other boxes that they were just uh, not even close to this quality. So it's good quality. It's just that um, the cards are not uh, staying in place. So if you're going to move around... This is not a good um, box to carry them in. Okay, now let's see how we're going to do this. We have the deck and then we have the book. So let's just start. Let's do a mix and match of things here. All right, so this is the book. So it's uh, written by Lee Burst Burstyn. I'm hoping that's right. So it's right here. You can just read it because maybe I'm not pronouncing it properly. And I apologize if that is the case. Now, uh, we know that Jiro has done a lot of uh, decks. And we like his artwork, the people that we do. Because there's other people that they might not like it. And we don't care because we like it. And that's why we have it. So and now the thing with this deck that I found it very unique. Not un well, now, it, it, back in the days, it was really unique for having... Um, planets, astrology, and um, Kabbalah, or Kabbalah, 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 it depends on how you see it, or where, you, where you're coming from, uh, so we were not very used to seeing things such as that in our decks, so when this came out, it was um, the year, let's just see, it was very interesting to have uh, artwork 2005-2015 by Chiro Marchetti. So um, the Tarot Guidebook 2005. I'm not sure. I have it for a lot of years. And I think it was before. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. So let's just leave it to that. I have it for a lot of years. It's been out for a lot of years. Back in the days, there were not a lot of texts like this one. So uh, the guidebook, what I was expecting, you do get... Let's say the good things about it, and let's just start complaining right after that, because <laughs> I usually do that. I usually complain when I was expecting more, when when the deck is so good, and I'm like, oh, just give me that 
a little bit more, that extra, go that extra mile for me. All right, so over here, we do have, um, because we have this card, so once you have a card like this, which is the tree of life, which is Kabbalah, right? You expect to see a little bit more of that concept in here. We do see um, the correspondences when it comes to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Is that in frame? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. And then it goes into astrology. It doesn't really explain things. It doesn't explain why the planets and what it is. It just kind of references it. And then in, in the book, it will just say what it is. And just a, like not even a paragraph, it's just a sentence. It is a sentence and there's all this white space around so they they could have taken a little bit more even here like um that's the majors right so you get astrology this is all that you get capricorn is a sign of materialism that's that's that hebrew letter and that's that so it doesn't talk about the connections uh, it doesn't talk about the progressions. It doesn't um, talk about levels. It doesn't talk about layering. It doesn't. It, it, it doesn't connect the worlds. It doesn't. It, okay. So when you do, you're, when you're doing a reading, and I have another deck here that I'm going to talk about, which is this, the heaven and earth tarot. That I find that there's the same thing going on here as well. Is that they have not taken the time. If you're gonna. I don't know. So I, I don't, sometimes I just don't understand if the point is just to, to have certain things in as extra tools, because some people do use it, that is different than approaching the deck, such as that it includes those extra things. So for example, here we have um, the, the letter and the symbol for astrology, but we don't really get a real explanation in here other than a sentence. So it's either you take the deck because you know how to use it, but if you're gonna get the deck because you wanna know how to use it, you're probably not gonna get that. That's what I'm trying to say here. For me, that I know how to use uh, those um, symbols, I, I don't have a problem. I, I can work with that, but I don't need it because I know how to use it. So that's not, it doesn't add or it doesn't take away. But when I first bought this, I bought it because I thought and I was expecting that the book that comes with it will give me uh, more information, which I'm not getting here. So all that you're going to get is this, uh, the Hebrew letters, the astrology. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't think you're getting anything else because when I read, that's a long, long time ago, like years ago, but I did not find what I was looking back in the days. So there's, there's other sources if you're interested. I'm going to be doing a, um, it's a good book. Other than that, like if you're purchasing the deck just for tarot, there's good information when it comes to tarot. So you're going to understand it. Even if you're a beginner, you will understand there's good information. I'm just saying that because this could be used for people wanting to advance in their uh, studies of the tarot, uh, I would prefer because the knowledge that it's in here is more or less out in the market. Like we have seen that is not something um, um, extra, like more. So I would rather have a more intermediate level and make it this unique. Th that's what I'm trying to say. It's not that it's not good. There's a difference to what I'm saying. I'm saying that it, this is good for a beginner, but because people that would get this deck will be more or less um, intermediate to advanced readers, I would prefer to have the material in here, like the content here to be more um, approaching the intermediate learner or reader than a beginner. That's what I'm trying to say. But for a beginner, this is awesome. All right. So I'm going to be doing a series um, because when you're doing a review for a deck, it would just take, look at that. It's like almost 10 minutes already. It would take so much of the time um, of the deck to go into explaining, you know, Kabbalah and what it is and what it works. So I'm planning on doing a separate series when it comes to astrology, when it comes to mysticism and how it's been used, I will give a reference um, on what to read if you want to get uh, deeper. Some some uh, books you might not be able to find, but we'll, we'll see how we're going to do this when, when we get there. So don't expect, if you're here because you expect this to be a review that has a depth when it comes to um, Kabbalah uh, elements, like, and these are not elements because, did I mention this? They have these four extra cards. So these are the, pa pa it's a palace of coins, the palace of swords, 
uh, of ones and the cups. So in Kabbalah, we have kind of a world that they're connected um, and energies that you can go up and down. Well, this is going to be too complicated for people that are really beginners. But anyways, so this is kind of a depiction of that, of what that means. So you can know if you have this in your cards. I'm assuming that that's where they're, they're coming from, <laughs> but that's how I'm using it. So if you want to know uh, your layering when it comes to uh, using Kabbalah, then you can add a card of that in your reading. And if it comes out, you know where you stand or where the information is coming from and what you need to work on. Or you can just uh, have the cards laid out as, I don't think that they have this kind of information in there. But anyways, as um, how we do the yearly readings, and if you're a beginning, probably a beginner, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do a yearly reading, not by season, but if you do a yearly reading by um, uh, astrological sign, more or less, then you do have the, the positioning. And then you use the progression. So you can do it like that. Or else you can just uh, use it as an element. But if you have an ace, uh, the aces, then, then this automatically gains different uh, meanings and depth. So let's get this out of the way. So we're not going to go into uh, depth about that. We're just going to go through the cards and go through them and look at them and see what comes up. If anything comes up, it might not. It might. I don't know. <laughs> it's just some days are different. I feel like complaining. Other days I'm like more fun <laughs> to be around. <laughs> okay. I apologize. Let's see what comes up. Um, but I will be, if you're here because you're looking for intermediate to advanced knowledge, I will be doing series, um, that include those kinds of information. I'll, I'll teach you how to read using it and what difference it makes. Okay. So over here we have the full, and as I said, up here, we have the, um, planet or the sign. And here we have the letter of the Hebrew, the Hebrew letters. And they didn't even explain like the depth of that. There's, there's a lot of information. Anyways, now when it comes to the symbols that they're using, more or less is right or weight, and we know that about you, and we like that. I have said in the past that one of my most used decks is by him, and it's the um, Gilded Tarot. I love it for personal readings. I love his approach, uh, how the, his decks talk to me. Uh, I don't know if you're getting the same um, vibes from his, uh, his artwork. But to me, they're very, I, I see images in my mind. When I use his decks, I see images in my mind. And I really appreciate that. I, I, I like it. It's just we, we vibe. <laughs> we work together in a very nice way. So I enjoy his artwork. At first, I wasn't very, because we were not familiar to this uh, art style back in the days. But uh, now we're seeing more and more images coming up like that. So... It is unique because it was uh, the one who initiated this style for us. So the emperor and the empress. Okay, this is faith instead of the uh, hair font. But we do see all the symbols that we have here from different religions and different um, cultures, cultural religions. So you see like Om and then Yin Yang. Um, the cross, you, you do get different things here. The lovers, this is a beautiful, I love, I love this image. I love this image. I actually like all his artwork. So it is different. And I like it. I like it that it's very zoomed in. So you're really, really living it. Sometimes this can be a problem because the cards are big. I didn't mention that, huh? There's, there is a difference. Uh, so when you have a big spread and you get it's big cards and you don't have the option of um, cutting the borders. So it's a big deck and a big spread and zoomed in. Sometimes it's just kind of a hard to read. Beautiful chariot. Uh, but um, it works. I like the artwork a lot. Very nice. Look at that. Very nice. Strength. The hermit. The will, justice. Now, justice. Look at that. So you're getting. It's like you're getting images of uh, kind of a human from not around here. <laughs> it's 
some of them just don't look like so human human like they are human like but they don't look like me from here uh the hanging man and then death very nice death And I like the depth in this uh, deck as well, because it seems like the Gilded Terror that I'm using doesn't really have that depth. That's why for a personal reading, it's straightforward. It's just, uh, you see the information. It, it, it reads, I should be doing a review of that deck. Uh, it, re it reads like a Lenormand. So if, if you're familiar with, with um, Lenormand readings, and I'm just waiting to finish what I'm saying because I really, 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 really like this devil. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at this. Look at this. Just look at that. So, so nice. Uh, the tower. So I was saying that our oh, gilded uh, tarot reads more like a Lenormand. So it doesn't... I know how to take it up and down uh, through levels and layers. Uh, however, it doesn't really read like that. It's more to the surface. It's more a personal reading, straightforward. It will give you the information that you need. You can see someone's life just like this. This one takes you deeper. So you can, like with a gilded, you can see, uh, you can go into psychology. You can go into uh, th thoughts. So you can pick up the thoughts of the person. You can pick up uh, his ideas, his belief system. But here you go a little bit deeper. So you understand um, the, the depth of someone. It reads on a different level, like a different way. Ace of Cups, Two of Cups. I really like this deck. I enjoy it very much, very much. Uh, okay, and I did mention that there's other decks also. This one. Look at that. What a beautiful image. And it's not only this one, but I cannot be... You know, showing why everything will never finish here. <laughs> and I can stay here the whole day, as I have said, because I'm addicted to tarot. You're not going to stay here with me. <laughs> Look at that, the two children. I'm missing the exchange, but it's okay. I can work with it. The seven. Eight of cups. So I'm trying to go faster for you. <laughs> Then we have the Nine of Cups and the Ten. Lovely. Now the page. And what I like about Chiro's work is that the core cards come across nice. Um, very nice to me. Like I like it. So we have the King, the Queen, and the Knight of Cups and the page. Now what I'm saying here is even if you take out the title, you more or less know what this is, even with a with a knight. You, you can come up with a, what it is. This is a queen of cups. Like for sure, you know what it is. There's no doubt in your mind of what this is. And that's what I like because they're really um, down to earth when it comes to that. We do get those images that they're not so human-like, but for the most part of it, they're close to earth. Uh, the ones, the three, the four, it has a gate here, the five, very victorious, very nice. But is it is it imposed on you? Are you supposed to be happy with uh, the outcome? Are you out, down here, up here? And are you supposed to be happy, cheering for someone that just had a victory? It could be a victor of imposing new taxes on you. Are you happy? So seven of wands, eight of wands, the nine of wands, and ten. Look at that intensity here. And then as I said, the core cards here. So very nice with a king. With your queen, sorry, and with your nine of wands, and then your page. 
Now, Ace of Coins. Your Two of Coins. I really... Well, this one is like not my favorite one. I don't know because it's blurry because I don't get the sharpness of the image. It's like I could deal without this figure here. And when you get like um, this kind of artwork, I don't know. And the background like this behind it is so nice. Three, four, five. And I want you to see this. Like, look at the expression here. Look at her. Six. And then seven. The little dog there. The eight of coins. The nine of coins. And then ten. The page, the knight, queen, and the king. And why do I have a page of swords? It's probably what I said, that when you put it in there, things don't come out the way they should. And I try not to move it. I was just, I was bringing it, like holding it with both my hands so it doesn't move. <laughs> and I don't get mixed cards. I'm sorry, I'll fix it. Okay, so the page, page of coins, the knight, you can tell it's a knight. And even if it's a, it has a movement, it's, you see it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so you get the um, pentacles, um, slow movement here. The queen and the king. La, let's see now what has happened here. So I have the court cards. Okay, so that should be at the end. Is everything else in place? Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So the ace, and this is what we get. You see that? The two of swords. Very nice two of swords. Look at it. Very nice. The three of swords. And she has like, um, do you see like the one uh, side being brighter and the other one darker? But you see like, She's crying only on the on one side. So we don't know if she's really hurt. Pretending, is it hurting? What's going on there? The four. This seems like this person is willingly taking kind of a nap, like a resting period that this person decided to. It was not something that he had to do. So that's um, another approach that we like. Five of Swords. See the tattoos here? And in the background, there's an image. So it could be real or it could be in his imagination. Uh, the Six. That we know. Now the Seven. I like this. This approach, I really like it. Eight, nine, and you see that this is from a tree coming out. So sometimes we just see things. It's how we see things that we get the illusions that how we see them because it is about fears and stuff, but it depends on your way of seeing things. Not all people fear the same things. Uh, Ten of Swords. And then we have the Core Cards. So the King, the Queen. I like this Queen. Uh, the Knight and the Page. And see how over here we see that it looks different than the Coins, the Pentacle. That it's, there's a movement here. You see it from the horse, like the body that this person is sitting on the horse. And the Page. So that was the Tarot of Dreams by Chiro Marchetti. And I love saying it now that I know that I'm saying it properly. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Okay. Uh, hello, Chiro. Okay. So um, this is a wonderful deck. It reads beautifully. All his decks uh, read nice. I like the way they read. 
They're different than other decks. They read very clear. It's crystal clear when it says something, that's it. So uh, you should explore this. And it's a good thing if, you're, if you wanna go into um, deeper, like with Kabbalah and astrology, you could uh, pick up this deck so that you have right in front of you the, um, like the symbols. They're nice, big and clear. There's no way you can, you know, you, you can miss it. It's right in front of you. So that is very, very nice. Okay, so thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this. Do come back. There's more coming up. And I would like to use one of uh, Chiro's uh, decks and do, and do something with it. We'll see how we're going to be doing them. They're more personal for the personal readings. I appreciate more the way, the way it reads for the personal. So maybe we'll do something on that. We'll see. Anyways, so thank you for watching this. I do appreciate your love and support. Do come back. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I love you.